السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the King, the Master, the Sustainer, the Creator of the heavens and the earth, and we send peace and blessings upon His beloved Habib Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, even in life, there's the good, the bad, and the ugly. There's always the VIPs. Unfortunately, even in deen, there's VIP. Sometimes it's VIP from Allah, and most of the times it's just VIP from the jahiliyyah of people. So I'll give you an example of VIP. Those companions that migrated from Mecca to Medina cannot be compared to any other Sahabi. Anyone who came after the migration was always second best. Allah chose. Those 313 that were present in the battle of Badr cannot be compared to anyone else after them. Not those that attended Uhud, not those that attended al khandaq In fact, so much so that Jibreel alayhi salam, the greatest of the angels, one day was having a discussion with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And just try to imagine this discussion. You know, for me, I always like to imagine why, what was happening, who was around, was it day, was it night. I, my mind drives me crazy. But imagine two friends. You know, sometimes you're walking in the street, you see a completely white man with a very dark black man, and you think, how did these two ever come together? Imagine how a human being and an angel became friends. How? <laughs> so one day they discuss, you know, one day they're speaking to each other, two very close friends. So Jibreel says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says to me, Ya Rasulullah, what do you people say about the 313 that attended the battle of Badr? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in return, he says to me, Jibreel, we deem them to be the greatest amongst the men amongst us. So then Jibreel says, he says to me, Ya Rasulullah, by Allah, the angels that came down to fight with you in Badr are also the greatest of the angels in the heavens. VIP, Allah chooses. So Allah chooses bila hisab. Allah, when, when Allah chooses, don't try to find the theory behind it. Don't waste your time. For example, there are nine planets. Sometimes they say nine, sometimes they say ten. They're still arguing, is this, you know, is Pluto a planet or not? But whatever the case is, there's nine planets. Why Allah chose Earth is beyond me. Allah chooses. Allah chooses what He wants, when He wants, how He wants, where He wants. He does not get questioned. From the planets he chose earth. And from the 12 months of the year, Allah chose the month of Ramadan. Why? Don't ask. He just did. Of the seven days of the week, Allah chose the day of Jumu'ah. Of all of his creations, Allah chose the human being to be the best of them. From the humans, Allah chose 124,000 to be the VIPs of VIPs. He made them prophets and messengers. From the angels, numbers you cannot comprehend. From the day that Allah created until this day, every single day, you know where the Kaaba is? The Kaaba. 
On top of the Kaaba, directly in the heavens, there's a place called Al Baytul Ma'mur, Al Baytul Ma'mur, which is basically a house in the heavens. In that place, every single day, from the time Allah created the heavens and the earth, every single day, 70,000 angels walk in. They make tawaf and they leave and they never get a chance to come back and make tawaf again. The Prophet of Allah was sitting with the Sahaba one day, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he says to the companions, he says, I see what you don't and I hear what you don't. He says, verily the heavens have squeaked, verily the heavens have squeaked, overloaded, too much pressure, too much weight. Sahaba are amazed. He says, There isn't room in all of the heavens for four fingers, except there is an angel in prostration to Allah. Of the angels, Allah chose Jibreel. And Jibreel is not necessarily the biggest. Those that carry the throne are far bigger than Jibreel. But selection, selection. Why did Allah choose Jibreel? Is it because he's the strongest, the biggest, the fastest? No, 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 no. Allah chooses. So from the 124,000 prophets and messengers, Allah chose five. We're speaking VIPs now. From the five, he mentions them in the Quran as Ulul Azm. These were the, the five prophets of strength and might. The five prophets of strength and might. Nuh, Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then from the five, Allah chooses one. When he chose the one, Allah did not say to that one that you are the greatest from the prophets, nor did he say you are the greatest from the humans. Not Allah says to that one that you are khayra khalqillah. You are the greatest creation I have ever created. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the Quran, Allah gives salam to the prophets. Salam on ala Ibrahim. And salam to Musa. And salam to Isa. And salam. He gave salam to all the prophets. Except to Rasulullah. When he spoke to Rasulullah, he says, Inna Allah wa malaikatu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. What honor. The Sahaba, they describe him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They describe him. They say he was neither tall, neither short. Everything about him was the middle path. He was neither tall, neither short. He was not difficult to look at. But they say he was more inclining towards height. They say his skin was neither black, neither white. He had a round face, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with a large forehead. He had a vein on his forehead that would appear when he was distressed or unhappy. The Sahaba knew that when that vein would appear, move out of his way. He had jet black hair. And he used to grow his hair. Sometimes to his ears, sometimes to his shoulders, but it never went beyond his shoulders. Sahaba described his hair was neither curly, neither straight, it was wavy. And sometimes he would shave it completely bald for the ibadat like Hajj and Umrah. He had large eyes that were jet black. 
He had long eyelashes, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He had arched eyebrows with a gap in the middle. He had high cheekbones. He had snow white teeth. Sahaba described them like hailstones. You know when it hails? Snow white. And he had a slight gap between each tooth, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He had a thick jet black bead that was full. In fact, the Sahaba described, they said when he would recite Quran, we could see his bead tap his chest. And in his bead, he had some, some gray hairs. Some companions said 13, look at the detail. Some companions said up to 22 gray hairs in his bead. Whom the Prophet of Allah, he said the verses of the Quran, the verses of Surah Hud and its sisters gave me white hairs. He had broad shoulders, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He had a flat stomach, not like me, flat stomach. Even in old age, his stomach never went past his chest, ever. He had some light hair on his chest, and the hair would come down to the bottom of his, you know, like they call the snail trail. It came down to the bottom of his stomach. His hands were softer than silk. He had large calves, an arched foot. If he spoke, you heard him. If he shook your hand, he never removed his hand until you removed it first. If you called him, he never ever, never once in his life did he ever turn his face. He always turned his shoulders and addressed you with his shoulders. Anyone that met him, anyone that met him walked away convinced in his mind that he loved him the most. We all know the rank of Abu Bakr, don't we? But to prove to you that anyone that met him was convinced that he loved him the most, look at these qualities, look. One of the companions, he comes to the Prophet of Allah, can I kindly ask the brothers to move forward, please? Just if we can fill up the, the lines as best as we can because there's brothers having to stand. So one of the companions who was so convinced that he was loved the most, he wanted to prove his point to the other Sahaba. You know, sometimes, khalas, he was convinced, maybe something he said, something he did. So he says to his companions, I'll show you he loves me the most. So he comes up to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he says to him, O Prophet of Allah, who is the most beloved to you? You know, again, I always envision, you know, sometimes all the boys are there. Watch out. Sheikh. Sheikh, who do you love the most, huh? Con confident. So he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. So he says, no, 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 I mean from the boys. <laughs> he says, her father, Abu Bakr. Anyone that met him, was convinced that he loved him the most. The Sahaba described his character. They said he was always smiling. Though there was always stress and worry on his face. He slept very little during the night. Very little. He would he would spend the nights in tahajjud, 
until his feet would crack and swell and sometimes bleed. So Aisha one night she says to my Prophet of Allah, why do you do this to yourself? Has Allah not already forgiven your past, your present and your future? Has Allah already not promised you Al-Maqam Al-Mahmud to you? Why do you do this? You know, sometimes Allah gives you the privilege of going Umrah. You come back, you start looking down at others. Sheikh, I kissed the black stone when I was there. You know, these peasants, they haven't been, man. But me, me, I've been. Haven't you been promised Al-Maqam Al-Mahmud, Ya Rasulullah? He says to Aisha, should I not be a thankful servant to Allah? Sometimes Allah gives you a few extra dollars. It's ran, sorry. So instead of thanking him, Sheikh, I knew when to buy and when to sell. I've been in the market for a long time, you know. I studied my opposition well, you know, my opposition. No thanks to Allah. No, no, no. Me. You know who spoke like this? Qarun. Qarun spoke like that. No, no, he says, should I not be a thankful servant to Allah? Sahaba described him, they said he was like a virgin behind her veil. What do you call it in this country? Barda? Barda. He was like a virgin behind her veil. But don't you dare for a second interpret this to mean weakness. Because the same man who was like a virgin behind the veil, Sahaba said when we were on the battlefield and the fighting would become so intense that we couldn't fight anymore, they said we used to run behind his back just to get a moment, to get a breather while he sallallahu alayhi wasallam continued fighting. My brothers, I want to ask you, how well do you know your Prophet? Because the truth is, Allah says to him, that, oh, he says to him, O oh, Prophet, if they came to me from every door, and they came to me from every valley and every mountain and every peak and every hill and every, if they came to me from every path, I will reject them all until they walked in through your door. The only way you can ever enter paradise is through the door of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa But I ask, how well do you know him? How well do we know his life? I ask you sincerely, we say Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but what's his surname? You know, sometimes Muslims, out of, you know, extreme love, we like to display love, you know, that if anyone ever insulted Rasulullah, I will die for his honor. I tell him, brother, slow down before you die and kill yourself, slow down. This man that you're prepared to die for his honor, what's his surname? Muhammad what? And then you see the brother, he, you know, he starts scratching his head. Does he have a surname? What's the names of his brothers and sisters? Does he have brothers and sisters? What are the names of his siblings through Rida'a, breastfeeding? He has sisters through breast, or does he? Look how confused some of your eyes are now. What's the name of his mother and his father? Very quickly we start to realize, my brothers, that this so-called love that we display is actually quite shallow. 
Because I could tell you the name of my favorite actor. And I can tell you the name of my favorite soccer player or football, whatever you call it. I can tell you the names of the presidents and when they came and, how, and when he was released from jail and the sacrifices he made for this country. And I can tell you this. And I can tell you about my country. And I can tell you about my nationality. And I can tell you about the struggles of our people. And I can tell you, and I can tell you, all this knowledge Allah is not interested in except the one that is most important to you. Actually, we know nothing. What are the names of his wives? Who are your mothers? Look, forgive me. Grab any kid off the street. Ask him, what's the name of your mother? If he doesn't know the name of his mother, what do you call this boy? Sheikh, we're in the masjid, man. We can't say the word. The kid doesn't know the name of his mother. I challenge. Who can give me the names of the wives of Rasulullah? Your mothers. <laughs> we don't know them, man. That's why your daughter looks up to Beyonce. That's why your daughter is in love with this actress and that actress and this singer. Because even you don't know your mother. My time is limited. My brothers, we need to re-evaluate and assess that this man whom we claim we love, this man who will be your only ticket on the day of judgment, sometimes your son disobeys you and you withhold things from him. Ah, I want to teach him a lesson. On a day that's 50,000 years long, a day that prophets and messengers are scared, a day where you will be naked, barefooted, uncircumcised, a day when prophets want nothing to do with their people, a day when prophets, Isa alayhi salam, wants nothing to do with his mother Maryam, a day when Ibrahim wants nothing to do with Ismail and Ishaq, and Hajar and Sarah, he wants nothing to do with them. A day when Adam alayhi salam, the father of all of humanity, wants nothing, nafsi, nafsi, the fee, every prophet will say, the, venge the, 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 the anger and the wrath of Allah we have never seen. And you and I will be running around scared and petrified. No one to help. Your mother is running away. Your father is running away. Your son, you know your kids, you have sacrificed your whole life. They're the first ones to give you up. Your wife, who she owned you, she owned you all your life. She's going to be the first one to say, Allah, throw him into the hellfire. Every one of us will be running around, scared, worried, petrified. Only one hope. A man who you don't even know his name. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the understanding and reconnect us with the Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaha. Allahu Akbar, 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 Allahu Akbar,